Home Bosses. In today's video I thought we'll do something a bit different and I asked in the Facebook group the Home Boss whether they thought it was a good idea to have a question and answer session on this channel and I thought I could answer questions that people have in the group because we can all learn from each other. We all have the same questions sometimes and people told me they thought it was a good idea and so that's what we're doing today. I'm going to answer a few of your questions and by the way, if you want to join our group on Facebook, it's a really lovely group with lovely people who are so helpful. I've got a link below the video where you can find our group and just in case you want to search for it on Facebook, it's called The Home Boss Group and it's all about earning an income online, either by blogging or by doing KDP. Mainly it's now it's kind of evolved into a group that's all about KDP. But I can also answer any questions you have on blogging and also because I think you might consider branding your books, in which case you will maybe think about having a blog for your book. So it all goes hand in hand. So that's our group and I'd be really, really happy if you wanted to join us there. So let's go straight to the point and answer some questions. And I had a, a good question from Brian. Hi Brian, if you're watching. Brian said, do you think you can over design a cover? Brian, I can totally identify with that. <laughs> you can over design a cover. It's very difficult sometimes to know where to stop. So yes, it is one of those problems that we have when we, when we want to be perfect. And sometimes done is better than perfect. <laughs> so I don't know, but let me know if anybody has this problem. Do you sometimes over design your cover? Do you find it difficult to know where to stop? Do you doubt your designs? Do you think, well, do you sometimes think this could be better and then you don't publish it? I think if it stops you from publishing something, then you're definitely overthinking it one of the main or one of the best advice that I can give you and that and it really is good for anything in life is don't overthink things because I find that a lot of the people that are doing low content books really overthink the situation. Some people find it even hard to start and really once you've published your first book it becomes easier and easier and easier. So I would say even if your cover isn't perfect, even if your cover doesn't feel to you like that is the best that you can do, just publish it. I mean, when I look back at my first covers, my first books that I did, I look at them and I think, oh my God, <laughs> they're horrible. <laughs> they're really, really not what I would do now. But you evolve in time. You find your style, you find your your way of doing things. You find that in time your designs will become better and they will become more coherent and they will just look like they're your designs. You will find your style. So yes, it's very, very possible in answer to your question, Brian, to over design your covers. I do it all the time and I find it hard to, to know where to stop. But you know, sometimes you just have to make a decision and say, right, I'm stopping here. I'm just going to publish it. And you can only do the best that you can. So don't worry about it. In time, you will improve. So don't worry about being perfect. Done is better than perfect. If you don't publish your book, you definitely won't get any sales. So it's better to publish a book that's not perfect and at least you get the chance of a sale, they're not publishing at all, and then you definitely won't get a sale. So yes, very good question, Brian. Thank you for that. And another good question I had was from Oko. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Let me know if I'm not. But Oko really has good questions on in this group. Oko's asking three questions, really. So that's really good. The first one was, how can I use Pinterest 
to market my books on Amazon because most of the videos online are not explicit. Thank you for that question. I, I kind of disagree. I think there's a lot of videos online on YouTube that really explain Pinterest very well. But I do agree with you when it comes to KDP low content books, there is less information. I will, I will say that you're right there. Um, but you can adapt, you know, there's, there's a lot of videos that explain how to use Pinterest for blog posts. When you're blogging, you, you really want to pin a lot of your content to Pinterest. I get around 60% of my blog traffic from Pinterest. So it's a very, very important part of your marketing. It works really well for books as well. Now, for those of you who don't know what Pinterest is, it's not really a social media platform. It really is more like a search engine, but with images. So if you go on Pinterest.com and have a look, you can type anything in the in the search bar. I'll show you. So you have to make an account. Unfortunately, you can't just use it without an account, but you sign up. It's really easy to sign up. So, so for example, this is my gardening Pinterest. So you go in the search bar and you can just search anything. As you know, as you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm searching a lot of gardening things. You could search funny quotes about money. Say you want to make a notebook with a funny quote on top and you need some some inspiration. You can search on Pinterest. You can have a look here, get inspired. It's actually a, a good place to do some research as well. I know some people do research on Amazon, on Etsy, Redbubble, those kind of sites. But Pinterest is another really good website to do your research. And then you just type in anything in the search bar that you want to search for. That is what Pinterest is. It's basically like a search engine with images. And it's really, really good and very, very, very popular. It's becoming bigger and bigger every year. So that's what's what Pinterest is. And how can you use it for your books? Well, the easiest, really the easiest way to do it is to go on your book. So, for example, imagine this is one of your books. It's not one of mine. I just picked one random book to show you how to do it. And when you click on on the book, Amazon actually gives you some possibilities here to share. So you can share this by email, Facebook, Twitter, and there's our little Pinterest pin sign. So if you want to pin it on Pinterest, imagine this is your book you have made your Pinterest account and you call it if you want to brand your site or you can call it your author name or anything that you that you want to call your account and then you click on this pin and I'm not signed in now so it's not showing you let me see if I can if I can quickly sign in so I've logged into my home boss Pinterest which isn't really I don't really do anything on there but just to show you how this works, I will pin on Pinterest and now it's showing me the pin. When you make a, a Pinterest account, you make things called boards. So you can create a board. It's a little bit like um, a pin board, you know, like when when you're writing things to remember, like your shopping list and you pin it on your pin board at home. Pinterest is a little bit the same. It's just pinning reminders to a board, but instead of reminders, it's things that you want to to look at and see. And, you know, you're creating almost like a mood board or like a like a board of, of things that you want to remember. So that's why they're called boards. So you make a few boards and you give them a title. Like, for example, I've I've made some boards for the home boss, which are called blogging advice, blogging resources, how to grow your blog, how to start a blog, thehomeboss.com. So obviously this doesn't really go in any of those boards. So you would have to create one that's for books or something like that. I'm just going to pin it just to show you. I'm going to pin it on the home boss. So I would then click save. And now it's saved the book to my home boss Pinterest. So in your case, it would save 
your book to your Pinterest account and then other people can see it on Pinterest. And believe me, when other people search on Pinterest, they will find it because Pinterest is not as huge yet as Google or as YouTube. So there is still a lot that um, it's still not as saturated as some of the other search engines. So it's very, very useful to do that. I will probably make a video on how to brand your books or how to create or how to market your books on Pinterest. And because there is so much information on that, I will either have to make a series of videos on that or maybe even a little course on that because it's a very important subject. It's a fantastic way to market your books and it's free unless you want to pay for Pinterest ads, which you can also do. But I find that I don't even have to do that. All I do is when I publish a book, I go on my book, I click the pin button here and I pin it to my Pinterest account and that drives traffic to my book. And I do find that it helps. So that's a really good way to market your books on Pinterest. So that was Oko's first question. And then Oko asked, when is quarter four starting? Or explain more on this. Well, quarter four is it really just means, for those of you who don't know, the year, the business year or the year is divided into quarters. The quarter one, the first quarter, is January, February, March. Then quarter two, the second quarter, is April, May, June. And then quarter three is July, August, September. And the really important quarter four is October, November, December. And the reason quarter four is so important is because the months of October, November and December are the months where people are starting to buy stuff for Christmas. Maybe it's not the same in every country, but definitely here in the UK, people go absolutely mad buying things for Christmas. And I'm sure it's the same in the USA. I'm sure it's the same in Australia. And I'm sure it's the same all over the world where Christmas is celebrated as a gift giving holiday. So quarter four is huge. It's where you can really make a, a year's income in one quarter. So that's why everybody is always talking about quarter four. So quarter four is starting in October. And this is why we have to really prepare now. The earlier, the better. I would say start preparing for quarter four in June or July, because then you can produce books that are targeted to the gift market and you can produce more books so that you have a really good amount of books to sell for Christmas. So that's quarter four. And then Oko also asks, how can I also use Pinterest to direct traffic to my blog? Because YouTube videos I watched, I don't understand. Um, Oko, there are lots and lots of really good videos on YouTube that talk about Pinterest for blogging. And I can really recommend Susie Whitford. She is absolutely my go to when it comes to blogging. She has got a YouTube channel and a website called Start a Mom Blog. And she talks about Pinterest. So I leave some links below for you, Oko, so that you can you can click on that. She's really, really good. I learned everything I know from blogging from her. She has a really good course as well on blogging, which I, re I can really recommend. I bought it and I think that was the best money I spent on any course because it was really good. This is for all the bloggers out there who and for all of you who might want to start blogging about your books as well. There is really a lot on YouTube, um, how to use Pinterest to direct traffic. And it's what I explained earlier. It's just pinning your books to Pinterest. And that is the easiest way to do it. But you can go a step further than that and make some pins so that you have different pins for one book. And because you can't keep pinning the same pin over and over on Pinterest. So there's a way of making pins. And I think I, I have a, a video myself that I did on how to make a pin for Pinterest. I will leave a link for that 
underneath the video as well in case you are interested. So that's about Pinterest. I hope that was helpful. I will talk about this more going forward because I think that when it comes to branding our books, we do need to use Pinterest and we do have to have a website or a blog to, to talk about our books. So actually let me know if you would be interested in a course that talks about branding your books and marketing your books. Um, if anybody is interested in that, I'd love to know because I could make a course on that. I think it's such a big subject that one video wouldn't be enough to cover it because it would really involve branding your books, branding your author name, uh, making a website or a blog about it, pinning onto Pinterest and marketing on different sites like Facebook. You could make a Facebook page. You can open a Twitter account and really market your books on social media. And that way it will draw traffic to your books and there's so much that you can do with a brand so let me know if that's interesting and if if you would like me to do that i will definitely create something like that for you so i hope this was helpful to you today and again as always thank you so much for watching i really appreciate every single one of you and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing so that you can get notifications when I bring out new videos. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye bye.